G'day and welcome to True Footy Podcast 42. This is a very special one today, Busher, because we've actually got a guest on for the first time who might know a little bit about what he's talking about, uh, more so than you and I. We've actually got someone from the uh, football media. So welcome, Lenny. For jo- uh, thanks for joining us today. How are you? Thanks for having me. It's definitely one of the better podcasts I've listened to, so it's a real honour to be here. Oh, thank you. Thank oh, you, mate. Very, very kind compliment. <laughs> um, yeah, cheers, mate. So um, obviously, like we get into the draft in a big way, um, but we are, we're football media tryhards, so we're the amateurs here, yeah. uh, but I do know that you yourself, you actually work in the industry and you have, um, you've, you've been a football writer for a number of years, haven't you, like um, yeah. with, with certain blogs? So why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit and all the listeners about uh, what it is that you do for a living? Yeah, so at the moment I'm currently helping out the WA Football Commission with uh, their under eight, or with the WA under 18s and the WA under 16s draft hopefuls, um, so helping alongside guys like Peter Sumich and Mick Ablett get the messages out there about some of the talented youngsters we have. Oh, big congrat- big thank you needs to go to Steve Tui and Elliot Rater, who are the WAFC media people. The fact they've put up with me this whole year is quite <laughs> remarkable for them. So no wonder they've taken a bit of uh, annual leave. They probably don't want to see me for the next little bit, but um, <laughs> big thanks to them for putting up with me. Um, and then I've done a bit of work for other media sites such as... Um, AFL Draft Central and Footy Profit, who have both been, uh, I suppose, sites that have concentrated on the AFL Draft. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> AFL Draft Central, is that the one that Matt Barmer's involved or was involved with? Yes. Yeah. Um, so Matt Barmer started, this is to my understanding, he started his media with AFL Draft Central and then now he's the chief draft writer for Fox Footy. That's right, yeah, because I've seen his name pop up. He used to be he used to post quite a bit on Big Footy and, and do his like fandom draft and stuff. So that's cool. So yeah, obviously you um, you take quite a great interest in the draft, don't you? Is that like where a lot of your like that like you say, there's a lot of where your focus goes, isn't it, the draft? So Yeah, oh uh, look, I think um, going up you realise pretty quickly that anyone can write about football, talk about football, but when you can concentrate on young fellas coming through the ranks, not everyone really knows a lot about them until mm. it gets to November, and I deal with some people who think they know what they're talking about. Oh, uh, um, yeah. I won't mention any names, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just really fun. Like you get, And also you get to develop, I suppose, friendships with the draft prospe- prospects. Um, a couple of years ago, I was actually the first person to interview Sam Powell Pepper before oh, cool. Channel 7 Channel 9 all got him, so... That was really fun. Um, awesome. And then, you know, with previous works as well. Um, so one of my work placements was with Subi Footy Club. Um, and so then you're helping develop those boys with their media commitments. And, you know, now when I go to Melbourne, it's I get to catch up with them. Um, and they tell me a bit about what's happening at their club, meet a few more AFL players. So, yeah, it's a really uh, rewarding job. Awesome. How, how long have you been in the industry? I started in... Uh, 2016, so I've been, this will be my fourth year uh, yeah. in the draft area. I did a couple of years previous, but that was just writing about football um, mm. and just... Building uh, your profile a bit. Yeah, yeah, just developing the craft, but since 2016, it's probably been when my official capacity has started. So, yeah, back in 2016 when we had quite a number of good players drafted, such as your Sam Petrovsky Satans and your Pal Peppers. Yep. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yep. that's true. Yep. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So, um, yeah, naturally, like Bush and yeah. I, as as we said before, like we we're always like quite into the draft. Yeah. Um, but we probably have found. I, I don't know about you, but I've found now that we've got like a channel with a few thousand subscribers, the scrutiny on us is a little bit harder. So yeah. I, I felt like the, the real pressure to. to um, to provide like good info on the draft has uh, has really risen this year, so it's good to have you on. So thanks for joining us. No we will get into some draft talk. Um, so I've got a question for you first yep. of all, as our resident expert, Lenny. <laughs> yep. um, how deep is this draft in your opinion, like comparatively? Because you know every year there's talk about how um, this is a shallow draft or this is a really deep draft, and there's always there always seems to be like a, a narrative about the next year's draft or oh, this year's shallow, but next year's really deep. Yeah. How do you view this year's draft, and how deep does the talent go? Oh, uh, look, I think with every draft, um, my personal opinion is every draft is quite deep because there are to even be recognised by an AFL club, you have to be supremely talented. Um, and to be drafted, you have to be exceptional, in my opinion. Um, now, compared to other years, it might not be as deep, but I still think there'll be some good um, late, late draft gems come in the 50s and the 60s and maybe even a few in the rookie. 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, we've seen from time and time again, haven't we, where um, like a draft, it's, it's so unpredictable. Like we were talking about it the other day compared to other sports. You were saying that NBA, the drafting seems like more of an exact science. You well, they sort of know more, of, like they've been watching these guys since they were like 13. There's that many people with eyes on them in the States. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But even then, like there is a bit of unpredictability, like, yeah. Because obviously clubs rate people differently and they have access to a shitload more information than the average person that does these sort of yeah. projections. So, uh, Yeah, that's true. You can never yeah, really get in someone's yeah. side, like a kid's yeah. head um, as well. So you never yeah. know like how motivated someone is. But that's why this drafting thing is so fun because you know you, you always see like late gems picked up every year. Yeah. Um, mature age picks. Yes. Um, I think we were talking a little bit off air and you think yeah. there's going to be quite a number of uh, mature age picks going yeah. this year. This is always an interesting topic for me. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you think there's going to be quite a few mature age pickups this year draft? Um, look, I think so. And I think it's starting to become a bit more of the trend. Um, obviously, in the past, you've had Tim Kelly, Marlon mm. Pickett in this year's grand final. True. Um, even someone like a Brody Majacek who just developed, he might not have been ready at 18, but... You know, he's developed his craft at Port Melbourne, I think it was. And now, look at him, he's one of Collingwood's better forwards. Yeah, very true. Um, and look, so I think that's why, as well, clubs might now start to look to mature ages. You know, they're physically ready. Um, they're probably more mature, in a sense. You know, some of them have gone out, been working for a couple of years in an apprenticeship yeah. or even gotten a degree. So suddenly they're set up for life as well. And then they just might be better prepared than an 18-year-old <laughs> kid who might not... Um, have studied who might not be as physically or mentally developed as them yeah um so yeah i think i think the way it's going and we've seen with the success of you know your tim kelly's your nathan broads marlon pickett's tommy uh, stewart tommy stewart was papley a mature ager as well yes i, I think he might have yeah, been a mature i think ager, he was yeah. a 20 year old when he got picked up so yeah. yeah um and that pretty much just shows you that you know they might not be ready at 18 they need a mm. couple of years just to further develop their skills and their bodies and Suddenly, yeah. hey presto, they're ready to go. Very true. Um, we were talking about it the other day in a podcast, yeah. actually. An interesting yeah. topic is whether the draft age should go up. What are your thoughts on, because you obviously look at the draft deeply every year. Yeah. Um, how would you feel if, say, in, uh, in the future drafts, they said the draft age is 19 or 20? Do you think that's a good thing? I think it's a really good thing. My, I'd actually probably say 21 because it generally really? is either 18 or 21. So True, um, yeah. So that's probably why I've probably been big on 21. I think it's better because... Say, for instance, someone like Tim Kelly, he might not have been ready at 18, but you look at him now and he's clearly one of the best AFL midfielders in the competition and he's just joined uh, your boys, if I'm correct. He's yeah, joined the right. Eagles, so suddenly they're looking extra scary. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, look, I think it's also the same. Nathan Broad has said, you know, in the past he wasn't ready at 18. You now look at him. He's a dual premiership player with Richmond. Good role player. Not in the same bracket as Kelly, obviously, but... It just shows you, you know, he might not have been mature, as mature as what he is now. Um, and that's why I think 21 is a good age in saying that, though. All the 18-year-old kids who I've been helping out this year are probably hating me for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, boys. Yeah, that's true. I guess there is, like, an interesting sort of pros and cons to it because the, the kids will probably be more developed, as you say, more mature. Yeah. I wonder if um, there's any risk of the, of the league losing talent when now I think about it because if you have, like, an 18 year, 19-year-old super talent, let's say, yeah. Uh, what does he do between 18 and 21 if yeah. he doesn't feel like going to uni, he doesn't pick up a trade? Okay, I've, I've got a better hypothetical for this, actually. Yep. Luke Jackson. What if Luke Jackson yeah. couldn't get drafted to the AFL till he was 21 and maybe he would have stuck with basketball? He maybe would have gone played college basketball or yep. yeah, gone that path if he had to wait three years playing in the waffle or whatever before he could mm. become a serious professional athlete in his chosen sport. Yeah. That oh, sort of look, thing. Obviously, like, yeah. it's that hypothetical, but I think that's this is why it's so critical for the WAFL and the SANFL and all the other state leagues to really be uh, promoted as a stepping stone for mm. developing footballers. Um, and again, I'm going back to Tim Kelly here. You know, like the thing that's so good for him is he's able to work on his craft in a very, very good competition, in my opinion. Um, and he's matching it with the bigger bodies and, you know, he's not just playing in an amateur competition, he's playing against really, really good opposition and mm. so you now look at it, he's now even further developed his craft and once he's in, straight away he's looking like a top three midfielder in the competition. even with Kelly, wasn't it, the year before he got drafted he went up another level, they felt, in terms of his waffle performance compared to previous years where he'd shown the flashes but then that... Yeah. Yes. Here he got drafted, he absolutely killed it. So in my, to my understanding, he was first flagged in 2014 when he got runner-up in his club's best and fairest. Yeah. 
Um, and then 2015, 16, he was gradually improving. And then a real massive spark happened in 2017. Obviously, yeah. he finishes runner-up in the Sandover, finishes runner-up in his club's best and fairest. And, well, you've seen in the last two years, he's definitely become arguably a top three midfielder in the competition. Yeah, it's crazy to think that he didn't even win the sand over that year. It was, it was Schleuth, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah so Schleuth. That's crazy. But yeah, no, I think you're, the point you make is really good, really interesting about um, the importance to make there needs to be like a strong um, sort of mid-tier sort of level. Even if, even if there's like an under-21s competition where yeah. there's enough like incentive for these kids to go and maybe, maybe they make a bit of money, but yeah. also they're getting developed like they're at an AFL club or yeah. almost as good as. Yeah. So they don't, you know, you don't lose a couple of years of important development. Yeah. But. You could even sort of turn these academies into more like a juniors team, like for corresponding age clubs like curtain raises, that sort of thing, like of a junior game. Yeah. That uh, sort of thing. Do you mean like logistically? Clubs, yeah, like a club. The clubs would have rights to those players because then, then it becomes okay. more like soccer where um, you, you, the draft yeah. system would probably start to alleviate. Like, yeah, that's like, true. Well, maybe draft it and then have them play in this league for a few years. Like yeah, like, well, like a development league, league yeah. but yeah. like having Eagles under 21, yeah. free yeah. OW. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's I'd, interesting. I'd yeah. also make it and sort of like in the, how the APL has it, where I think it's down to 21 to under 23 team. Yeah. Um, but they also allow senior players to go back down there. Yeah, that's true. So then that yeah. way, you know, imagine someone like Aaron Sanderlands, who in his last year, he might not have been playing AFL, but he's playing in the reserves and suddenly he's really helping his midfielders, telling them, you know, this is where you should be going. Yeah. And suddenly they're yeah. getting developed, not just by coaches, but, you know. Their peers. Actual yeah, players peers, and peers. Yeah. quality players as well. So, yeah. 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 Oh, that's good. Good, good, uh, good talk. Um, we'll get into the draft now as well, because yep. I know a lot of the listeners will probably be really interested in that. And uh, I was going to have a, we'll look, we'll start at the top of the draft. Yep. Um, not so much Gold Coast. I think, is everyone kind of, uh, yeah. like, you Rowland know, Anderson. Rowland and Anderson is probably yeah. exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. I can't imagine any trade that would make Gold Coast, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's no yeah. players that can no. get traded yeah. now. No, so, yeah. The only thing I genuinely thought during the trade period was they might have packaged one and two for Matt and Brad Crouch. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I had that. Some big fickle, bodies yeah. in that midfield, mature bodies. I mean... Ready to go, guys. I think, I think as well, they've actually recruited really well. Someone like Hugh Greenwood goes in there. He can help mm. out the youngsters as well. And obviously, there's a few other ones yeah. in there. So, look, I, I think they're... I'm not saying they're going to be playing finals or doing a ridiculous jump like what Brisbane did this year, but I, I can see light at the end of the tunnel for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I saw enough flashes this year, even when everyone was like, yeah. even I said to myself, this is the worst list in AFL history. Yeah. Like this 22 they're putting out, there's yeah. the worst people have ever seen. And they still had a pretty solid percentage. We're really competitive in a lot of games, knocked off a few yeah. teams. And Stewie Jew yeah. is someone who actually knows what he's doing. So yeah. he's, They've got the right people at the helm yeah. now. So his record thing. might be taking a hit uh, from... Yeah. What I've heard from a lot of people within the industry is that he's actually a really good coach and he's developing, and I think we're going to see that in a couple of years' time. So, well, yeah. look, I think like most people, I just really want to see that club succeed. Yeah, I, I'm the same. Some people want them to fail. I don't know why. But if you look at the, some of the talent they've got, uh, if you add Rowan Anderson, you yeah. also add Ben King, Lacocious, and Rankin. That's yeah. five really, really top-end yeah. talent players. Yeah. That, that you know, That's probably better a talent pool than they had when they actually started, when they had all those yeah. draft picks. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting. But we'll, we'll look at Melbourne because they have the first yeah. live pick of the draft. Yeah. This, some are saying, will shape the rest of the top ten. We might all even have different opinions on yeah. who will go there. Yeah. Um, Lenny, do you have do you have an opinion on who Melbourne should take and who do you think they will take? Look, um, so at the moment with their current list, they inside mids are well stocked. They mm -hmm. don't need any more. I mean, you've got Atraka, Harms, Oliver, Viney, Brayshaw in the guts. So probably they're probably looking more for your outside classy players. Um, so you know, into the thinking comes someone like Hayden Young or mm -hmm. Lockie Ash. But as well as that, they really only have two genuine ruckmen on the list and. Someone like Luke Jackson as well, they don't have to play him as a starting ruckman. They can play him as a third tall four. He's about 199 centimetres. He moves really well for a big man. And look, some people say to me, oh, he's under 200 centimetres. My argument is Stefan Martin Paddy and Paddy Ryder are players that are under 200 centimetres. So he can match it. And he's shown this year that, you know, when he finishes runner-up in a Lark medal. Um, and he's... First real serious year of football as well. Yeah, so he's got. I look. If, I'm obviously biased because I work with the WA boys. I sure. think Melbourne. I I'd be looking at him with pick three. Yeah, that's yep. your preference. Yeah, I was that's what it sounds like. They, they sound like they're into him, yeah. Melbourne. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what the consensus and their forward is. line as well. We saw this last season. It didn't quite function as well. So you add another tall in there. Suddenly that mm. can stretch in oppositions. Um, I suppose. 
uh, key defensive stocks. So, yep. And we probably saw that in last year's prelim between the Ds and mm. your team. So suddenly they thought they had to bring in someone else to help cope with um, Darling, Kennedy, Lacroix, who plays tall as well. So that's it's really interesting. So that's probably now another thing with clubs that are trying to look at ways to how to stretch oppositions. Yeah, true. Well. Yep. Yeah, And versatility, I guess, would be a big plus with that, especially if you have a Ruckman yep. who can play in two, yep. like a rest forward yep. and actually impact, um, which is something, I guess, maybe they don't feel Gorn and Proust. I mean, Gorn's a superstar. They don't, yeah. They're not really looking to like... He's, yeah. he, he floats better in the back line, I found. Yeah, that's Gorn. probably yeah. true. I like him as a floating he back. He turn 29 as well. That's so true. Suddenly yeah. They probably want that yeah. extra insurance just in case. And Jackson's probably like yeah. three or four years off, probably playing every game as yeah. the best 22. Maybe. Ruckman. Like, as the best 22, Ruckman is probably a few years off. But he could yeah. play, play, play K forward yeah. probably reasonably quick. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess what I mean is not banging, her, banging the door down to play games from yeah. day one, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Like, that's the thing as well with Melbourne fans, if they do take him, just realise he is going to take a couple of years. But... Remember, uh, Brody Grundy in 2012 went pick 19 and everyone was a bit surprised, but now you look at him. Um, yeah. In my opinion, I think he's the best player in the competition Ooh, right, that's a good right now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so that's the thing. Ruckman and those key position players, they do need a little bit more time than your True. midfielders who can chuck on a wing and let them become seagulls. Um, He's so, probably got a couple of centimetres of growth in him as well, right? Yeah, like yeah, 18 I, years uh, old, yeah. I didn't stop yeah. growing at 18. And the other thing is, we brought up the undersized thing the other week. The thing is, in basketball, he was undersized as well. Like, he was a lot more undersized in basketball compared to what he is in football. Yeah, like, right. the position and True, role he yeah. played in basketball, he was very small. Most yeah. guys in that position at higher levels are probably 6'9", 6'10". Yeah. And he's 6'6", 6'7". Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, oh, sorry, so one that. thing also was one of my best mates, he works at East Ferro as their team manager, and he was saying to me, in some games, he's just played as a big body midfielder. Really? As like a battering ram for the yeah. team. So that all, you can almost do almost like a rotation with him and Petrarca, which I know they're wanting to get uh, the track into the guts. So suddenly you've got two... Uh, absolute balls in there who can also rest forward. Yeah, right. So, oh, that's yeah, interesting. That, yeah, he even so. hinted in some of his interviews and stuff that he like, wouldn't mind trying a bit of midfield, yeah, which so. would be interesting to say. Like, Brandy does it. He yeah. does that sort of mm. yeah. style of play. He could definitely do that. Yeah. It's not unlike Nat Nui either, yeah. who's, who's like at ground level still quite a bit of a clearance ball as well. So, yeah, yeah. that would be interesting dynamic. But that's a really good segue into GWS, yep. who have now traded – up into pick four. Yep. Now, the talk about that is obviously they want to get another pick in before yep. they take Tom Green. Yep. I'm kind of thinking, and I think it's a fair assumption, they've probably got their eye on a specific player, yep. in my opinion. Yep. I have, I've read, but I've also, my opinion, would have thought that's Luke Jackson, but yep. the very interesting dynamic, Luke yep. Jackson goes to pick three, and suddenly yep. they've got pick four, yep. and they, the player they want's gone. Yep. Who Look, do you think they will be looking at? Okay, for starters, if Melbourne don't take Luke, I think he's all but certain to go to GWS. Sure. So I think pick three or four is essentially his draft range. Mm -hmm. Look, um, as well as GWS, when you when I look at their list, they've pretty much they're covered in all areas. But with Heath Shaw nearing the end of his career, they're probably going to look at another small to medium sized defender. So someone like Hayden Young or Lockie Ash could come into play. So sure. Hayden Young, he's He's more your Christian Salem kind of defender, very classy, very skilled, reads to play well. Beautiful kick. Yeah, whereas someone like Lockie Ash is more like your Adam Sard, Kate Simpson, like they love to take the game on, love mm. to run it out of defence. Line-breaking speed yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, so. Yeah, interesting. I was, I was thinking of a comparison between these two young players. I wanted to get your opinion on them as well, but yeah. it's almost like, for me, in my opinion, Ash seems like a much more high ceiling, high potential. He compared himself a little bit to Whitfield. I know he's yeah. not quite the same yeah. player as Whitfield, but I feel yeah. like that high potential kind of player where his yeah. young strikes be more of like a Salem or even a, a Shannon Hearn, dare I say. Not Again, not exactly yeah. the sort yeah. of player, but it's a really trade-off where I feel like Ash has a much higher ceiling, but Young seems like the more reliable kind of yeah. long-term player. Do you have a preference between those players? If you were picking as GWS, which yeah. one you would take? I'd probably take Ash. I think they've got... Because, again, he can also have another year of development in mm. the NAFL. Um And then, really, once he takes over from Heath Shaw, he's almost a similar player to Heath Shaw than yeah. someone like Hayden Young. And really, what GWS's list, I know they got thrashed in the grand final, which I was kind of thankful for being a Fremantle fan. I sure. don't think I could deal <laughs> with the whole GWS won a flag before you. But, um, yeah. look, it, I think he could slot into that team in the back pocket, halfback flank really, really well. Um, and their list is actually really good in my opinion they mm. were missing four or five of their best players in the yeah. grand final so um yeah i personally would go ash at four but 
if they did say Han Young, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, for sure. Yeah, even with Do those. You have a preference? Yeah, yeah, I was real tough with those two as well because I've sort of, I really, really, those two are probably almost my two favourite prospects. Really? Sort of, I really like the way they both go about it. I feel like the, the player sort of, who sets up from the back line is becoming a more and more important yeah, position yeah, in the modern game, isn't it? Yeah, like I felt like, like if you're tossing up as a team, like you'd go towards Ash if you like need a bit more pace and like yeah. line breaking. But whereas if you want someone who's a bit more of an intercept, grab, pluck, like throw his hands in a pack, that sort of thing, young. Yeah. They both offer those sort of little nuances. Well, that's what brings me as well to Adelaide's pick. I know we're just kind of going down the draft. I'm not intending to go all the way down the draft. But yeah. um, Adelaide's pick is really intri- intriguing for me because I feel like they just need some real top-end talent. They're going to try and rebuild... Um, before we try and rebuild on the fly, on the fly without yeah. trying to actually yeah. go down to the bottom of the ladder, yeah. they've got a, a really high pick from Carlton. Yeah. Um, for me, I feel like they should be going for more of an explosive type, so like a, a Flanders. I think they've been linked to. Yeah. Um, even Ash, I think, could because yeah. it's so damaging. Yeah. Um, who who do you think? Will? Oh, look, I think um, they could also they'd look at those two boys who you've yeah. talking about, spoken about, like the, those explosive guys going mm. to the midfield. Um, I know that their midfield can probably be seen as a little bit vanilla. So yeah. you add someone like a Flanders in there. And he doesn't have yeah. to be starting midfield. He can be a hybrid forward that can go into the midfield. The other thing, though, is when I look at their list, they're probably a little bit light on with key defensive prospects. And they have recently been linked to a kid called Fisher McCasey from Sandringham. So he's a really good key defender, can intercept Mark, um, reads to play really well. But it's probably... And Hamish Ogilvy is a very good recruiter, very sound. He's made mm. good decisions in the past. I think everyone forgets is that he had to take the brunt of it when they selected Paddy Dangerfield over, um, I think it was Scott Sel- oh, oh, Brad Ebert, actually. Brad Maybe. Ebert. Yeah, it might have yes, been Brad Ebert. Brad yeah. Ebert. And, you know, you look at it now, and with hindsight, Dangerfield's oh, the yeah. <laughs> Just but, a smidge. Interesting. But, you know, like, so he, he does know... Those recruiters can also block out the noise from the fans. Yeah. Um, and... You know, I think he'll do a very good decision. Yeah, interesting. So yeah. I'll just jump on that point quickly where it's about how you say how you were saying how list managers are good at managing fans' expectations. I can see that being a bit of an issue with Fremantle. Like yep. I know myself included to a certain extent, it's like I've got I really like Devin Robertson and it's yep. like he's a local kid, seems like a really solid young guy, but yep. and a lot of Freo fans are probably even more worse than me in that perspective, going, Yeah, get the local kid, yeah, 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 that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Without knowing the full picture yeah. and just thinking, yeah, we've heard this limited stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So, look, t- look, I absolutely love Dev. I love the way he plays. I've worked with him this year, interviewed him. Very nice. Down to earth. Even after he won the Lark's Lark medal, he was very, very down to earth. The issue with him and Fremantle um, is that Fremantle has a lot of inside midfielders. You know, you've got, like, I know this guy's a long way out off the top in terms of being the best player, but you've got Fife, then mm-hmm. you've got Mundy, you've got Brayshaw. Brayshaw and Chero they've just recruited in Chero, the last few years. Yeah. yeah, you've got Conka in there now. True. You've got Blakely, Tucker. So they've got a lot of those inside mids. Um, so look, as much as I love Dev, I, it's a bit hard because he's also not the quickest kid out there. And look, everyone says it's not the most skillful. It's a bit overplayed that in my mm. opinion but he's more of a neat kick than a penetrating kick if yeah. that makes sense so and really right now Fremantle's looking for those outside classy ball users which obviously they've got first rights to Liam Henry um, but obviously someone like Liam is probably going to have to start his career off as a small forward like a Michael Walters start off as a small forward and then gradually push into a midfield um, but yeah I think that's the thing as well recruiters also yeah it's easy to identify who the absolute gun talents are but you've also got to look at how do they fit into the team. Mm. What what's the team going to look like in next year, three years, five years, ten years? Um, and so that also comes into consideration as well. Now it helps that Fremantle today did a trade that got them pick seven and eight. So suddenly they're not too worried about they can when they get to pick seven or and eight. Suddenly it's they can decide which two players they want. Yeah, not they have to pick one because they think another team might pick true another one. So. Yeah, because I sort of had that logic before we did the trade. Like, if they were into Devin Robinson, for example, like they could think, oh, he might still be there at 10. We can take a more X Factory player, take that gamble at that pick seven. Yeah. But then now, like, yeah, see if he's there at pick 10. But if he's not there, it's not the end of the world, sort of thing. Yeah. 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 yeah the, the Liam Henry bid is um, is very interesting. So, I, like, it seems clear that the three men will have obviously traded from 10 up to, up to eight to. Um, yeah. To not have to worry about like using pick 10 to match the bid, which would have been a bit of a disaster, I think. Yeah. Where do you foresee a Henry bid coming? 
Um, so I think possibly I'm going to have to look at the notes. That's all right. That's Maybe all right. someone like Carlton, who mm. is the next pick after right, the female's yeah. top two pick, top yeah. two picks, because they're probably in need of a little small foot. Their tools up for it are very good. Although, albeit I did hear today that Charlie Kerno did suffer another yep. yeah. issue to his knee, which isn't great. fractured patella or something like yeah, that. I believe which isn't great. fell down, fell down yeah. or something. Was like ax- horrible accident. Nothing. Yeah. Untoward. But also, Melbourne, after that pick, might also look at a small forward because yeah. Jeff Garlett's gone and they did miss out on Jamie Elliott in the yeah. trade period. So And Carlton missed out on maybe Martin and yeah. uh, obviously Papley. They didn't yeah. get done. So, um, yeah. And I could see Waitman. Yeah. Just a little, little yeah. I had a, a little bit of a chance for Bolter. Bit of a conspiracy theory I sort of had with this Freo trade today, actually. <laughs> well, so, sort of like, I think they've sort of done it and then Melbourne's going to try and bid on Henry, I think. But then we'll match, and then they'll just get first crack at more talent. Like rather than having a, it's a weird one to explain. But like, what's the conspiracy then? Sorry. I sort of think Freo and Melbourne did this trade, and in, maybe intentionally sort of thinking Melbourne could bid on Henry with ten, but then no, we'll match whatever we match. So they got a free pick out of us because we we're going to match regardless. And then yeah. they still get a good crack at whatever talents they're after Henry, even though they bid and we match. Right. If that makes any sort of sense at all, do you guys? That's it. Yeah, it's a bit of a conspiracy theory. Yeah. I think it was just to avoid using 10 on Henry. Yeah, I'm, well, use. Yeah. yeah I'm in the same bracket. Look, mm. he's a kid who's probably worthy of being a top 10 talent with the year he's had. Um, but at the same time, you've also got to weigh up because clubs will also know, look, he's quite slight at the moment. Even yeah. though he is quite strong, he doesn't look. He is quite slight, but he does um, have a lot of range of X factors. But as I also said before, he needs to start his career as a small forward. Fans do free man of fans, mm. including myself, mm. need to realise that that he is probably gonna take the Michael Walters approach than yeah. someone like a Sam Pal who can start yeah. in the midfield. Yeah, I don't I hope not too many people see him as an immediate midfielder. Like maybe on the wing maybe a bit, but, but yeah, I, I always saw him as a forward from yeah. what I've seen of him. Yeah. Some free man yeah. interesting for, um, Possibilities for Fremantle spec, I reckon. One player I've actually got a feeling they might pounce on, even if it's a little bit early, is Dylan Stevens. Yeah, yeah I really like Stevens bit. for Fremantle yeah, as well. He's. I think they'll, they'll look at Ash, like we said, but yeah. um, I think Ash will be gone. Yeah, Ash like and Young are probably seven. gone. And yeah. they might look at someone like Hayden Young because, yeah, in my opinion, if they get someone like Hayden Young, he can almost you can almost put him in a back pocket. You can mm. then push Luke Ryan to a half back flank, and yeah. then because they're worried about speed, you can put Nathan Wilson onto a wing. True. So suddenly you've got that bit of extra pace on the wing. Yeah. Someone also that's a good kick, which Fremont yeah. do need. We don't have the most skillful list, but suddenly you've got three great ball users suddenly in the team. And yeah. Yeah, Wilson is definitely a viable wing. I felt as soon as Langdon and Hill were out the door, I thought that was a possibility they move him up. Yeah. Yeah, interesting, interesting. One player you did touch on before as well that I was going to ask about before. Yeah. Interesting point for two reasons because we've had a little bit of a uh, conversation about how to pronounce this name. Yeah. Fisher, you said McCasey, we said Macasey. I got yeah. ripped in the comments of the last video for saying yeah. Macasey. Yeah. But then I think Toomey says Macasey. Yeah, that's where I'd heard Macasey. That's, yeah, yeah, I'd heard Toomey say that. McCasey yeah. seems right as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. But, um, but he's an interesting player for me because I feel like he has quite a, a fairly wide range um, but it's all subject to trades as well because I think yeah. I feel like one player like like you said Adelaide at the moment is where I think Mackesy will go or McCasey yeah. he'll yeah. go at pick seven maybe yeah. uh, that's probably my tip but if he gets past there then I'm thinking some teams like Hawthorne yeah. and Geelong they could either trade up yeah. or because I mean the Bulldogs are at fourteen yeah. I think and I think they're linked to, to him yep. um, as a need because they need keybacks yeah. as well yeah. um, but that'd be interesting for me to see I think Geelong could yeah. trade up. Thing is, if he does get past Adelaide, Hawthorne wouldn't need to necessarily trade up because Freo don't need the tall talent. Yeah. Carlton don't need the tall That's talent. True. That's Melbourne true. Melbourne probably don't need the tall well, talent. I mean, Especially if they're taking Luke James. Stephen May yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. That's right. That's uh, right. Exactly. Lever, who's come back to look Good for point. the Demons Good point. fans yeah. who have had a rough 12 months. They oh, yeah. realise what it's like to be a Fremantle fan. But <laughs> suddenly, you know, you've got Stephen May who's come back fitter. You've got Jake Lever who's going to be fitter after true. his knee recur. So suddenly... Defense is sorted. Yeah, the back line still is good. Pretty solid, isn't it? They got like Salem, Marty Hoare now as well. Yeah, I like um, Marty Hoare. Yeah. And at the end of last year, I think 16 of their best 22 had to have major operations. Yeah. Which really, you don't want to make excuses, but I think when it's 16 out of mm. your best 22, 
I think you're entitled to say that we might have had a bit of a rough yeah. season. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think I think they will bounce back, but I do wonder if there's some psychological scarring. This is not a team that's proven themselves to be mentally strong, or at least a club. Yeah. You know, mm. they haven't really bounced back too well from adversity in the in the past. So I think they're going to be a really interesting one to watch yeah. um, for that reason. Um, in your opinion. How well does the because you're very WA focused? Obviously, yes. we're here in sunny WA. Um, yeah. How does this WA draft crop, which is considered very strong, how does it stack up to some previous years? Do you think? Oh look, I think WA has had some amazing talent come through the past few years. Um, in 2016, obviously, you had I think we had four boys in the first round, which I think yeah, we right. can match this year. Yes. Um, in That's 14 cool. and 15, I know they were a little bit light on. 2013. 2013 was, was a great year for him. Yeah, very, very good one. That was the year that... Uh, Cripps, McCarthy, Dom, all that. Um, Sheed. Sheed. My favourite player, Tommy Sheed, I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Robertson was good at the time. He's just been delisted. Um, yeah, Akers was, was another one. Yeah, yeah. Akers was yeah. taking the top 20. Yeah. Um, there was more. Oh, Jansen was in the yeah. late 30s. 30s. Jansen was in the 30s. Who's yeah. one of the mature ages who I reckon clubs should be flagging. Really? Interesting. Because yeah. I thought, I didn't, I don't follow the Waffle and East Fremantle closely, but did he actually have a good year in the Waffle? Yep. Yeah. Um, and I've also spoken to some East Fremantle people, and yeah. they reckon he should have polled a lot more in the Sandover. Right, yeah, um, okay. And the way I see him, perfect club who I would absolutely implore for them to look at him in terms of a late pick or rookie um, is Essendon. Yeah, so okay. right now they're probably missing that big, all in the midfield who doesn't mm. really care about where the <laughs> opposition is or if there's someone around the ball who's just going to win it. Um, and that can free up players like Zach Merritt who's probably better on the net as being an outside inside midfielder. Sure. I yeah. don't know if that makes any no, sense. No, I, I totally know what you mean. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jano is definitely a bull. Even in high school, he was just an athletic yeah. specimen but just throw his weight around in yeah. sports. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a lot and with big. the ladies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, did, he does do well with the ladies, old Jano. He's a lot bigger than what I thought he was. I think he's right. 193 and about Yeah, he's a big eggs, boy, so yeah. yeah. He can match it. And my argument is, so he might not have made it the first time, but he's gone back to East Fremantle. He's worked on his craft. He's gotten better. And someone like Essendon, who's probably really needing that big inside ball, I mm. think they could do worse than pick him up in the rookie draft. Yeah, um, interesting. Yeah, so. Y- you might know this guy fairly well, Ben Sokol. Yes, yeah, um, I went to school with Ben. Of yeah. course, yeah, I knew he was sort of in your guys' yeah. like, sort of. I, kn- I have mutual friends, but I don't know him personal sort of yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah, and he's at Subi now. Yep. So yep. do you think he'll get drafted? Because I've seen so many... Uh, things of where he's linked, particularly to the Eagles, because the Eagles don't enter the draft until forty six. Yeah. Um. So we're like we're always linked to like these mature ages. But yeah. um, do you think he's going to get drafted this year? Um. Yes, I do. Um. Obviously, I'm mates with him, so I sure. might be seen as yeah. biased. But yeah, you look, can't say no I've... on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's useless, mate. Um. Look, he's look. His end to the year was absolutely ridiculous. I think he kicked. 40 goals in the last eight games. That's mm. more than what most AFL players kick in eight games. Yeah. Or even yeah. in a year. So, um, And the thing as well is he can also play as a hybrid forward, a small forward, plays as a tall forward, but he can also go into the midfield as well mm. if needed. So, Pretty big body too, isn't he? Yeah, like, so he's, yeah. he's like a Josh Caddy. That's who yeah. I liken him to. Um, he obviously clubs that with late picks. So I think Melbourne's been linked to him. Think, yeah. Fremantle with a late pick have been linked to him. Geelong, they're probably the main clubs I've heard yeah, interest okay. in him. Oh, and Essendon as well. Um, so yeah, um, I think he will go. Um, and the best thing for him is he didn't get picked up as an eighteen-year-old because he might not have been ready. So yeah, now yeah. he's got his degree. He's set up for life. If he does, if he doesn't get drafted, it's not the end of the world for him. Sure, true. But true. I think with his year and what he's done over the past few years, his body of work. I, I think he's deserving to be on a list. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Just as a side note, you talk about like players and being linked to teams and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you ever hear like many whispers about the Eagles? Because like, just as a casual reader of like draft news yeah. and content, I yeah. barely ever hear the Eagles are linked to a player. Yeah. Um, do you often are they a sort of club where you, you don't really hear too much about? Or um, look, I think also the fact that they pick forty six and picking the nineties. Yeah, if I'm yeah, correct. that's right. So, yeah. So pick ninety one's going to be. A late pick. Probably redrafting someone or yeah. something, maybe. And I know they yeah. are committed to Hamish Brasher and uh, Brendan Archie with a late pick mm. in the draft, but also being in West Coast are in a perfect position because they don't really need to add to their midfield. That's true. So you, they yeah. just brought in Tim Kelly. Their forward line's really, really good. You've got Darling and Kennedy. Um, obviously, Kennedy's in his last years, which 
does suck a bit because he was one of my favourite players to watch. Oh, really? Yeah, I love uh, me some JK, even though I'm not an Eagles yeah, man at all. I bloody love I, JK. But I've seen Oscar Allen as a junior, and, yeah. I, and I've, I think he's barely scratched the surface of what he's done at AFL level. Um, Call so, me biased, I totally agree. I think yeah. he's a future champion of the Eagles. Yeah, I love <laughs> Oscar Allen as well. He, yeah. he reminds me a shitload of Pav. That's yeah. who mm-hmm. Oscar Allen reminds me of. Everyone uses the comparison, but it's a bloody good one. Like, yeah. Alan can go back and kill it in the back line. He can play yeah. a bit of guts like Pav yeah. did. Mm. Forward. Second ruck. <laughs> yeah, second ruck, exactly. Yeah. But even if he plays as a second ruck, he's also smart as well. In some games, I've seen him just not jump up and he's suddenly become the extra midfielder. Yeah, I've seen right. the ruckman go up and all of a sudden they're going, oh, yeah. what's happened to him? He's done very well defensively. So, yeah, I think West Coast is actually in a list where they really just it's going to sound cliche, but they're just going to draft the best available yeah, talent. That's really, right, that's right. And they, they're lucky to be yeah. in that position. They could almost just go a bit more X factory talent and take the gamble on someone who could pan out to be yeah. yet another superstar for them if they get lucky because they've got the luxury of good depth and talent yeah. there already. Obviously, but, they might look at someone like a, or at a small forward considering the really Rioli yeah, case. Yeah. Um, that's why I thought Sokol. I know he's not a small forward in the in the yeah. Rioli mould, but I think also with he's probably a little bit more like Lacra, yeah. who obviously they didn't really replace either. And I feel like they might be a bit greedy and be like, "Oh, look at a mature age player yeah. who can play round one, really go yeah. out all yeah. out for the flag to it." So yeah. um, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Do you have a fav- Do you are you a sort of like player or follower of the? Are you sort of player? Do you, are you the sort of follower of a draft who has his favourites every year? And like, if that's the case, uh, do you have favourites this year? Like that you go, you really like. Oh yeah. Um, so when I was over in Melbourne to watch WA versus Vic Country, there was a boy called Brody Kemp who played. Oh yeah, and yeah. And every single person in WA has said he was the toughest individual opponent. Really? Yeah. He is tough. He's the way I describe him is as an inside midfielder, he's like a Paddy Cripps. Mm. Like he's a ball, goes out, wins his own ball. On the outside, he's like Bonton Pellet, can actually hit targets. Yeah. But then something that's really fasc- fascinated me was as a junior, he was playing as a key forward. Yeah. Whereas right. you see a lot of players now, like, um, so it could become like a five who started his career as a key forward. Yeah. And then transitions into a midfield. So when he does go forward, he's suddenly he's playing skills. like a key forward, not just like a midfielder. He doesn't yeah. really know what's. Yeah. He's just an assertive, powerful guy. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So yeah. you'd be pretty happy if Fremantle took a punt? I, I'd be ecstatic, but I think the fact he's had an ACL injury yeah, and the fact that he's not an outside player, which is what Fremantle. That's true. And needed. the fact Freo gambled, well, didn't gamble, I'd say. Well, gamble's probably the wrong word, but took a guy in Sturt who's probably more like potential based yeah. sort of guy, similar to the mold where. Yeah. You're banking on potential rather than a floor. Yeah. They're probably in a position where they could take one risky pick, yeah. one conservative yeah. pick. But yeah. 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 I think yeah. if I'm Fremantle at the moment, uh, the two players who I had were, if he's available, Hayden Young yep. and yep. Dylan Stevens. Yeah. Yeah, Depending like on what two. happens with Ash, but I think Ash will be gone. So that's yeah. how I'd look. But even someone like... Um, uh, Sam Flanders. If Adelaide yeah. don't, if Adelaide yeah. or Sydney don't take him, yep. I think if I'm Fremantle, I'd look at him as well. Yeah. He's a different sort of yeah. midfielder to what Fremantle have at the moment. So yep. I'd look at him. I um, agree with that. In our last mocky, he took Sam Flanders for Fremantle. Actually, I did. Yeah, I feel like a good rotating forward mid is pretty like a pretty yeah. good option for yeah. Fremantle. Mate, it's a bit, bit different to your other mids other than Walters. Yeah. Um, but if you look at like the Brace or Chera, none of them really yeah. swing forward as effectively yeah. as maybe a Flanders. But yeah. Um, we have a lot of Hawthorne fans who, who support the channel as well, so I will maybe ask you as well about uh, Finn McGuinness. Yes. If you, if, what are your thoughts on him, and where do you think a bid will come for him? Okay, last time I've been when when I've chatted to recruiters, it sounds like early second round is where yep. they think he will go. Yep. Um, look, uh, in the game against us, he was actually one of the better Vic Metro players. Um, we absolutely pants them, which was lovely for me hearing about <laughs> them. Um, but look, I uh, I think. He's supremely talented. He had a good end of year with Sandringham, if I am correct. I think he's from Sandy, and they've got a good history of producing good talent. Um, and look, I think he's he can also help their mould as well because he's a player that is very classy on the outside, can win his own ball. So suddenly you get Tom Mitchell, Jago O'Meara, and James Warple into, mm. as the inside midfielders. You've got someone who's got a little bit more class on the outside in McGuinness. And as I've constantly said, he doesn't have to start in the AFL. They can yeah. start with a VFL team, which is also a very strong team. I think they made another prelim in the VFL. So right. They're usually in the thick of it from yeah. what you hear, so, Box Hill. Yeah, so, um, yeah, look, I think he'll be a welcome addition to the Hawks, but I 
for the Hawks fans, I don't think they're going to have to use their first pick on him. Yeah, surely not. That's right. I feel like this is an interesting draft for Hawthorne because I think it's their first, the earliest pick since 06, yeah. we're told. So yeah, I feel like they kind of need to uh, to nail this one a little bit. Because well, they, they the last time in 06, I think they chose Mitch <laughs> Thorpe over Jolly Oh, right, true. Yeah, yeah, true. But they did build their last premiership. Well, it wasn't just on a really good draft team, but they obviously built... Um, had really early draft picks in like Hodge, the foundation, uh, Franklin, too, and Roughhead. Like they and all took Lewis those guys. As well. I think Lewis was yeah. like six or pick yeah, seven. Yeah, in the top ten. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, so yeah, there you go. So I, I feel like this is an important draft for Hawthorne, and uh, it, yeah. they're a bit lucky they've got a father son. Like yeah. it's always lucky when that happens. But it's um, a club yeah. that's had a good history of recruiting. I think. Uh, yeah. I remember they took Mitch Lewis with. After they got rid of Sam Mitchell. And yeah, it was, like, it was in the pick 80s. Yeah. Mitchell, it was and Mitchell yeah. Lewis and everyone was making all the memes. They've replaced yeah. their two old guys with Mitchell Just Lewis. I think it was with, actually with the pick that the Eagles traded for Sam Mitchell, pick 88. <laughs> yeah, it could <laughs> have been. Yeah, like, I think yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah that's right. It was part of the poetic yeah. judge. Yeah. A club like Hawthorne know what they're doing and they know um, and they've got a good history of doing it. So Yeah, 100%. I percent. Yeah, I yeah I trust them. I think Hawks fans can be a bit more relaxed this time around than... Yeah, other clubs. You can back in your list managers pretty good there, I'd say. Yeah. Very true, very true. Or they can just trade in the next uh, the next gun of the competition yep. anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, before we get into our pretty top tens, we'll go through one last question. Yep. Diamonds in the rough. This is always interesting. We yep. kind of alluded to it at the start of the podcast, but is there anyone that you think might come a little bit later on draft night, maybe on uh, the second night, the second yep. evening? Yep. Um, is there a player that you think is actually definitely going to make the grade or is yep. it a player you really like later on? Look, uh, there's a few boys. I'll talk about the WA boys first. Sure. Um, so one kid is called Riley Garcia from Swan oh, Districts. Yeah. So in the last game, he unfortunately did his ACL early in the first quarter. Um, but I, my personal opinion was I thought he should have been in all Australian discussion. Really, he's a midfielder like a Zach Merritt. He can win his own ball. He's tough, very skillful, both feet. Um, oh, that's a plus. The issue against him is he's I think he's one seventy nine centimeters. Yeah. So if he was maybe just a couple of centimeters taller, clubs would look more favourably. Um, I think it could really suit a club that's looking just for some midfield depth, or even someone that uh, is wanting a smaller midfielder that can. Provide a bit of zip for them. Um, West Coast. Yep. <laughs> well, I think we need midfield depth and we have our first pick at 46 where he yeah. might still be on the board. So, yep. yeah, but continue. Um, Mitch Georgiatis. So his father, John, is best known for kicking eight goals in his VFL debut. Oh, really? <laughs> so, and I've said this to a few people, imagine if an AFL player kicked eight goals yeah. in their debut now. They'd probably be on a million bucks after yeah. that week. <laughs> um, so Mitch, I liken him to someone like a Jack Gunston. They're yeah. strong overhead. And the thing that I love about Mitch is he's actually got a set shot routine. I've said every single time he marks, he points, he makes sure he knows it. And nine times out of ten, he's going to kick the goal. Yeah. Um, I read a draft. Uh, it was just a rumor, but somebody reckoned that Geelong are considering him with a pick in the 20s. So he might actually bolt up yeah. if that's true. But it yeah. could be completely made up rumor. Yeah. So <laughs> I also know that Collingwood are very interested in him. With yeah, right. 30, Five, I think. It's like they need a forward line target, yeah. like especially over 190 centimetres. So, yeah. yeah, that would make him a candidate. Yep. Um, and then you've got other players like Ujai Jackson's Cal Jamison, who's a ruckman. Yep. Um, Benny Johnson, who's a sm- not the ex Collingwood player. Yeah, he's a yeah. No, West no. Perth kid. Yeah, got, another player I'd hope goes to the Eagles. Yeah, Good skills yeah. out, of the, out of that half. You've got Ronan O'Connor, who could be the next Ben Cunnington of the Ooh. competition. He's a big boy. I think he's 192, about 90 kegs. Still, wow. has, still has to fill out, but he plays like an absolute, I, I'll China say, shop. a raging ball. Yeah, and right. He, he, put it this way, I, sometimes when I've seen opposition players around the stoppages, I get a little bit worried because the way he just attacks really? it, it's quite uh, scary. Yeah, okay. Um, Jake Bazzini, I think, is a very good key defender from Swans. He's more your Daniel Talia kind of defender. Right. Just no nonsense, gets the job done. Uh, Jackson Pryor. Now, he's mm. the son of Michael Pryor, who's currently at Fremantle. He was the first Eagles player I ever met. I met him at Hungry Jacks. Beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> no, nothing wrong with meeting your heroes at <laughs> Hungry Jacks. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Jackson, he, I liken him to someone like a Luke Ryan from Fremantle. Oh, okay. Like, he's that sort of player who can read the play well, medium-sized, can play tall or small, and is a good distributor by foot. Um, but then looking at some other... Uh, uh, Player. So Nick Bryan, who's a ruckman from Oakley, he's about 202 centimetres, 80 kilos. He's a good tap ruckman, um, so a club that's looking out for a ruckman could look at him. Ned Cahill, who's a small forward from Dandenong, um, he was the one who kicked 
the goal for Vic country mm. that put them in front against us. Yes. Um, yep. but then, After Hayden Young kick. Yep. Yeah. And then, that one I was raving yeah, about the last Regan Clark saved it for us. So yeah, thank yeah. you, Regan. Um, <laughs> Flynn Perez is actually an interesting one. So he's a boy from Bendigo. Is he um, another injury riddle yeah, player? Yeah. Yes. So he did his ACL at the start of the year. He was actually firming to be a top 15 pick. Wow. But now because of his ACL clubs might be a bit deterred and mm. especially with the fact that he's an outside player. Um, so that he might be an absolute steal. And um, then there's also a few uh, South Australian boys who they also actually had a really good carnival as well. Um, and they were the only attempt to beat us at this year's championship. So that's probably why I'm holding them in good regard. But They won it the year before, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. That's when they had yeah. Rankine, Lukosius, yeah. yeah. a few players. And Rosie. Rosie. Yeah, yeah, I think Rankine boys. actually will be the best player from 2018 in yeah, future right. years. Big call. Um, yep. Uh, Cameron Tarney, so he's a medium-sized forward that reads to play really well. He's strong, um, kicks goals. I think he kicked three against us. Um, Cooper Sharman, he's another general forward. Oh, sorry, he's an ugly boy. Harry Schoenberg, he's an inside mid. Yep, so he's out of Australia. He, he actually helped Dylan Stevens look good in that game. Now, Dylan Stevens was arguably best to field against us. He was magnificent. But Harry Schoenberg, the way he got the ball out to him and helped him get possession, I thought was tremendous. Um, but look, like any draft, there's always going to be late gems. I think Jason Johannesson went pick 39 in the rookie draft. And look, yeah. he won a Norm Smith medal. You've got Matt Prittis. Yeah, late McGovern. McGovern, <laughs> yeah. Um, so look, with every draft, and this is why I, I kind of get a little bit annoyed when people say it's a shallow draft. There's enough talent yeah. throughout the draft to get a good pick. Um, yeah. And then really just depends on the club's development as well. So Even drafts that prove to be shallow, like 09 was talked about as shallow, that produced... Nat Fife and Dusty. Dusty Martin in the yeah. top 20. So, yeah, no, you could, there's always, like, gems to be taken in, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, and even they – I think they did that thing where they go for, like, premiership teams and go the spread of where their picks come from. It was, like, 20% top 20, 20%, 20 yeah. to 40. It was, like, pretty even, pretty even distribution. sort of, yeah, between. Yeah, uh, yeah cool. Um, sorry, one more bonus question before the top yeah. 10. Actually, I thought, who do you think will be the best player from this draft if you had to lock in someone? Uh, and don't say Matt Rao. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Um, Look, before he did his knee injury, I had Brody Kemp as by yeah. far the best player. Interesting. Um, and to be honest, I think if Gold Coast only had pick one, I would have actually said take Brody Kemp over really? Matt Roll. Really? Wow. Yeah, I think Kemp's got a lot of upside. Now, hopefully I haven't thrown him under a bus because yeah. I like to undersell a kid and let them sure. over-deliver. Yeah, yeah. Um, but look, I think if you ask me in five years' time, I look, I still... Actually, I'm still just going to keep him. I think Brody Kemp. Interesting. Yeah, yeah cool. I, I still think. One player I think everyone's sleeping on is Caleb Sarong, because yes. I don't think we've even mentioned him once in this yeah, podcast. Yeah, he that's is, his he, first mention. Yeah. He's rated by some as like top five talent. Now he's linked to Carlton at pick nine. Yeah. He's a little bit small, obviously. Yeah. He's 179 centimetres or something yeah. like that. Um, but I think he's a bit of a gun. So maybe not the best player, but I just think I would like to give him a little shout out as someone yeah. I think will be a very good player at the next level. Yeah. Yeah, I think I said this last time, but I think... Within the five, six years of being in the system, Luke Jackson really figures out how to be a gun footballer and yeah. mm. succeeds, I think. Yeah. He's shown that ability in basketball to show how good he is and he can figure out in football because he's going to have a lot more time to work on football than yeah. he ever did basketball. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, yeah. it's a good call. I like yeah. three different answers and that's... Yeah. Uh, that's, that's and none of them Matt Rowell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's like, it's like betting on Dusty for yeah. Norm Smith. Like, no one's going to do it. It's boring. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's your dollar fifteen favourite. No even one bets he, on them. I was really won. hoping uh, Marlon was going to get it because yeah. I thought the I had story a bucks, behind, <laughs> behind it, like, debut, uh, just yeah. the blind turn on Whitfield. Uh, true. All the articles you get, right? Yeah, won the yeah. VFL one, then wins the AFL yeah. on the following week. That'd be wild. Yeah, yeah. that's it. All right, boys. Well, um, good draft talk. Let's get into a little phantom top 10. Um, each of us will go through. Who wants to go first? And we'll, we'll just p- quickly predict um, our top 10. Do you want to go first, Busher? Oh, yeah, why not? I've got it right in front of me. <laughs> oh, <All right>. oh, <laughs> okay. What an accident. <laughs> With pick one, Marrow. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. And Anderson, pick two, yeah. Yep. Pick three, I had Melbourne taking Ash. Like I sort of said before, that debate between the speed versus athleticism, I feel like they needed the pace of Ash more than maybe the... Leaping and athleticism of Young. Yep. And then GWS four, Luke Jackson. Yep. Yep. Pick I like five, it. I had Sydney bid on Green, GWS match. Yep. But then they take Hayden Young. Yep. Uh, Adelaide, I had them take Dylan Stevens because I think they don't have they've got outsideish guys, but they're more like guys that play back, like your Brody Smiths of the world, those sort of guys. Mm. Talia's. 
So I, I figured you could get Dylan Stevens. He's a local kid. Put him on the wing yep. for him, and he'd do really well. Then Fremantle, I had taking Flanders and Robertson. Carlton picked nine Sarong, and then Melbourne bid on Henry at pick ten. Yeah. But then Freo match and yeah. Waitman one's Freo match on it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cool. Well, yeah. that's pretty sound. <laughs> Nothing horrendously idiotic about that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's all good. Um, Lenny, would you like to take us through your predicted top ten? We've kind of asked you all these picks yeah. already, but if you give it a yeah. nice little summary, yeah, that's all good. A tail day. So with picks one and two, I think Matt Roll and Noah Anderson are pretty much have already pretty much packed their yeah. bags and are pretty yeah. much already at the club already. Yeah. <laughs> Pick three, I think Melbourne. Are looking at Luke Jackson. I think that's when he'll go. Um, as I said before, they've only really got two genuine rucks there, and he can also play as a third tall and help out their forward line. Pick four, GWS, because they can't get the dream ruckman. They're going to look at Lockie Ash to be an ideal replacement for someone like a Heath Shaw. Uh, then pick five, Sydney, as you said before, I think they're going to bid on Tommy Green. They're really after a contested midfielder, and I think they'll obviously GWS will match. So then they go, and I think they're going to look at someone like a Sam Flanders who can win his own ball, but also go forward. Pick seven, Adelaide, I think McCasey. Um, they're just going to add another key defender, Tom Dude. They don't want to rush him back, and we probably saw their defence a little bit vulnerable in some games. Yep. Um, pick eight, Fremantle, I think they're going to look at Hayden Young. They, as I said before, they can put him in a back pocket, Luke Ryan onto half back flank, and suddenly Nathan Wilson, who offers a bit more pace on a wing. Uh, their next pick, you've got Dylan Stevens. Uh, they're really after so those outside uh, sort of players, um, and I think he fits the mould. I think he's one of the premier wingmen in this draft. For sure. And yeah. number ten, I think Carlton would are going to look at Devin Robertson as to be the Robin to Paddy Cripps' Batman. Oh, that's I like it. That's yeah. what role. Even over Walsh, ooh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, look, the way I see Walsh is he's a very good outside midfielder whereas Dev's another bit more of a bull yeah. yeah so the way I sort of see that relationship would be like if you look this guy's now now champion but you can have Devin Robertson playing the role that Lockie Neal played when he was playing under yeah. five as well so, so I've seen the Trelaw comparison with Robertson a little bit yeah made do you see that or uh, I'd probably say someone more like a Nathan Jones so okay he's a real leader yeah um, and real tough. probably want that bit more leadership as well I like um, it. yeah ball and look is actually a reasonable kick in my opinion yeah cool yeah all right well that was good good top 10 yep. i'll go through mine uh rowland anderson like you said probably already up there at the gold coast pick three i've gone melbourne take a punt on luke jackson to supplement their rucks pick four i had a different name written down but i'm changing it on the fly pick four gws take lucky ash yep. um i think he'll be best available in my opinion and then sydney we've also the same thing yep. we'll bid on tom yep. green and that gets matched uh, by GWS. So Tom Green goes pick five. Sydney then take Hayden Young as best available. Seven, Adelaide, Fisher McCasey. I do like that pronunciation better now that I'm saying it out loud. <laughs> it does sound a little bit better. Freeman will then double up on Sam Flanders for the reasons we talked about before. Yep. Need a forward yep. mid. And Dylan Stevens for the outside run. So I think that they'll be really happy with that haul. Yep. Um, and then with pick 10, my boy Caleb Sarong goes to Carlton. Um He's not really a small forward as such, but I feel like he has a bit more of a point of difference being able to float forward and maybe with, with guys like Walsh and Stocker and taken in yeah. recent drafts, Carlton may prefer um, yeah. Sarong for his versatility or something like that. So um, there we go. Sarong can uh, also play as a half forward flanker, like a Robin yeah. Gray kind of role. So that yeah. also might be another factor for them looking at him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's just, um, that's, yeah that was kind of what I was thinking. Uh, I've got him down as 88 kilos. Is that right? Yeah, Maybe I've met a time. He's quite... He's actually he's strong. Right. Shit, that's quite, nuggety. He's quite yeah. strong, um, yeah. but he's only 179. Yeah. So mm. that's probably the issue against him. Now, yeah, might, uh, why he's slid sort of yeah. from the top five maybe a yeah. few weeks ago even. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. interesting. But looks, it, my argument is you never lose your talent. So True. So I think Carlton would be ecstatic if he got to pick 10. Yeah, cool. Yep. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I think we'll wrap up. This has been longer than we thought, but I actually think it's been a really good podcast. So, Lenny, thank Thank you so much. Uh, You've brought a real professional vibe to this podcast, (laughs) which has been uh, borderline, um, what's the word? Disgusting at times. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not really. Um, so thank you very much. No um, what will you be, where will you be on draft night? I'll probably just be at home, sinking yep. a few beers after no, I've told all the players not to get on the beers for the year. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll be having a few froths watching it. And look, good luck to every player that's nominated for the draft. Yeah, mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, exactly, for sure. Um, yeah, so thanks again. And um, if for everyone listening, um, 
this has been pretty much our first proper guest on the True Footy yep. Podcast as well, but hopefully the first of quite a few. We've got a few lined up over the summer, some other YouTubers and stuff like that. Um, we'll get on board as well. So if you're listening or if you're watching on YouTube, remember you can also listen to this on iTunes and Spotify as well if you don't like watching and streaming. So thanks very much. We'll see you next time. See you.